I love the futuristic racing genre. Blistering fast speeds, brutally hard difficulty, and addictive soundtracks to get you amped up. In my mind, this is one of the greatest subgenres within racing games, and the game that does it better than the rest of them is F-Zero GX. Developed by Amusement Vision, the same team behind Monkey Ball, and released on the GameCube in 2003, F-Zero set the bar for what other anti-gravity racing games aspire to be. While by today's standards the graphics may be a little rough around the edges, it stands out in my mind as the king of futuristic racers, which is why I can't wait to play the newest F-Zero. But, there is no new F-Zero. Honestly, Nintendo's treatment of the F-Zero franchise has been baffling as a fan, and quite frankly, is enough to keep someone up at night. So, what is a diehard F-Zero GX fan to do when there hasn't been a new installment in over 15 years? I have compiled a list of some of my favorite modern F-Zero-like games in the futuristic racing genre that either take some, or a lot, of inspiration from F-Zero, or are just plain fun adrenaline rushes that can maybe help to fill the falcon-shaped hole in your heart. I mean, not a literal hole in your heart. If that were the case, you'd probably need to play Trauma Center to figure out how to stop all the bleeding, and then that could get super messy. I mean, internal bleeding is a really terrible thing, and how are you supposed to fix that? My first suggestion is Wipeout Omega Collection, developed by XDev, Clever Beans, and Creative Vault Studios. When talking about futuristic racing games, it's impossible to not mention Wipeout. It's the other elephant in the room whenever the genre is mentioned, like, oh, you like F-Zero? You should try Wipeout. Or whenever a new indie anti-gravity racer is revealed, it's usually called a love letter to F-Zero and Wipeout. While these two franchises are the first party's juggernauts in their genre, they both take very different approaches, and when it comes to controls, represent the opposite ends of the spectrum. While F-Zero's controls are a bit tighter and on the what would I would describe as slidey side, wipeouts are more loose and rely on realistic physics, and are definitely more slippy. Both games take a different approach to combat as well. Wipeout has a heavy focus on offensive and defensive item pickups to obliterate your opponents, while F-Zero's combat has been uh, more minimalistic, relying on slamming or spin attacking your opponents when you fly past them. While Wipeout might be a bit slower than other entries in the genre, it still has a great sense of speed, and the possibility of dying while racing adds a degree of difficulty that keeps players on their toes and really emphasizes the combat aspects of the game. Add in a great licensed soundtrack of house and dubstep music as well as crisp clean visuals, it's really easy to see why Wipeout and F-Zero are always held in such high esteem. In a lot of ways, it's even easy to see them taking place in the same universe. If you think of F-Zero as the high-speed government-sanctioned entertainment races, Wipeout are like the seedy, tight-laned street races of the same universe. If you've always wanted to take a dip into the Sony brand of high-speed racing, look no further than Wipeout Omega Collection. While definitely leaning more towards the wipeout side of the scale in terms of controls, Redout is still a great game that borrows a lot of inspiration from F-Zero. Developed by 34 Big Things, just by playing the game, you can already feel the great amount of love for the futuristic racing genre poured into this game by the development team. Much like how there are so many wacky characters in F-Zero, each with their own backstories and relationships to one another, Redout has a deep lore and world as can be seen through the developer's artwork and production notes. Set in the year 2560 AD, planet Earth has become a wasteland due to global warming and overconsumption of natural resources. As a result, most of mankind abandons Earth to find homes on faraway moons and planets, while the majority of planet Earth is turned into an entertainment world, primarily for the SRRL, the Solar Redout Racing League. And that's where the player comes in, as a competitor in these blistering, fast racing competitions. Beyond its dedication to the lore of its world, what sets Red Out apart in the futuristic racing genre? Well, an actual Red Out is an effect experienced by pilots when performing steep dives that cause all the blood to rush from the lower part of the body to your brain, which can be extremely dangerous. The title of the game Red Out is in reference to this phenomenon, 
because as a racer you're actively avoiding red outs as a pilot, using the right stick on the controller to adjust pitch and strafe for your machine as you careen over and around large loops and drops. Tilting your ship helps add a new dimension of gameplay to the almost roller coaster like track design. Another thing I like about this game is that it absolutely nails its soundtrack. There aren't too many game soundtracks that I listen to on my daily playlists, but just like F-Zero GX, Red Out has a pulse-pounding combo of rock and techno that just can't be beat. If you're looking for a futuristic racer that gets you amped up, plays fast, and incorporates light flight mechanics into the gameplay, Red Out is absolutely worth checking out. I've honestly never played another game quite like Grip. If I had to describe it in a nutshell, it's like a full-blown version of the death race scene from Spy Kids 3D, just with less cartoony weapons. Developed by Caged Element, Grip is a heavily inspired spiritual successor to the Roll Cage franchise, albeit with a more Mad Max-like coat of paint. Featuring cars called Rollers and anti-grav machines called Airblades, you race on huge tracks that allow your vehicles to race on walls, upside down, and even flip your car over to help adapt to the twist and turn environments. The tracks are insanely complex and require serious track memorization by the player in order to succeed, much like F-Zero. But make no mistake, track memorization is not the only thing that will help you in playing this game. There's also a number of weapons and item pickups you can add to your arsenal to take down opponents, and to top it all off, learning this game's physics is absolutely brutal. While the game can be frustrating to learn how to maneuver your car in these spaces and how to avoid screwing up, the respawn system in the game is more of a hindrance than a help. It's tremendously satisfying to zoom around tracks and definitively nail jumps, flips, and landings properly. Additionally, while most games in the genre feature an elimination mode to show off their item lineup, Grip has a battle mode reminiscent of Mario Kart and has these Escher-like battle arenas that take full advantage of the game's wall driving and acrobatic mechanics, and is a ton of fun. If you've been looking for a game that combines the speeds of F-Zero with the acrobatics of Rocket League, you should give Grip Combat Racing a try. Also, I mean, just look at the game's logo on the loading screen. It's the same upside down as it is right side up, just like the gameplay, and oh my gosh, it's so clever, just... Fast RMX is about the closest thing to an F-Zero clone that has released in the past five years, and that's honestly not a bad thing at all. Developed by Shinnan and released as an exclusive launch title for the Nintendo Switch in 2017, Fast RMX is a deluxe version of Shinnan's Wii U title, Fast Racing Neo. While the controls are not quite as slidey and tight as something like F-Zero, just about everything else with Fast RMX is on par with F-Zero. The game does not use items for combat, in fact, there practically is no combat, with the most you're able to do is spin on opponents if you boost by them, and requires you to grab boost as you zoom around the track. What makes Fast RMX stand out from F-Zero, though, is how you hit boosts on the track. In Fast RMX, you change the color of your vehicle to match the color of the boost. If you get it correct, you get an immense surge of speed, but if you have the wrong color, the boost actually acts more as like a trap and slows you down. This adds an extra degree of challenge to keep players on their toes. But the fast gameplay isn't the only homage to F-Zero. The game's announcer is Jack Merluzzi, the same announcer as an F-Zero GX, and he delivers his line with the same amount of gusto and enthusiasm that makes GX memorable for me. There's even a challenge mode called Hero Mode, which turns your boost bar into a health bar and tasks players with coming in first without dying. While this is a separate challenge mode rather than a specific rule set that can be played with on cups to emulate the F-Zero feel, it is still a welcome addition. There's even a clever nod to the main mascot of the F-Zero franchise, with one of the machine corporations being listed as Full Con Capital. If you're wanting a futuristic racer that wears its F-Zero inspirations on its sleeve proudly, Fast RMX is a must-play. So those are some of my favorite futuristic racing games. While F-Zero GX is still my all-time favorite game in the genre, and I desperately wish Nintendo would release a new entry in the franchise, or at least like an HD re-release of GX, these games are great titles that will get your adrenaline pumping and help fill the void while we wait for a new title in the F-Zero franchise. Were there any titles I missed in my video? Do you have any recommendations of futuristic racing games I should check out? I would love to hear about it. Just let me know down in the comments below. 
Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.